You have redeemed us, Lord, by your blood for every tribe and tongue and people and nation and have made us into a kingdom, priests for our God. Alleluia. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, peace be with you. My brothers and sisters in Christ, as we place ourselves before the Lord on this Friday in the second Easter week, and as we begin this Eucharistic sacrifice, let us take a few moments calling to mind those times we have sinned so as to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O oh God, hope and light of the, of the sincere, we humbly entreat you to dispose our hearts to offer you worthy prayer and ever to extol you by dutifully procl proclamation of your praise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A first reading from the Acts of the Apostles. A Pharisee in the Sanhedrin named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, respected by all people, stood up, ordered the apostles to be put outside for a short time. And he said to the Sanhedrin, fellow children of Israel, be careful what you are about to do to these men. Some time ago, Theudas appeared, proclaiming to be someone important, and about 400 men joined him. But he was killed, and all those who were loyal to him were disbanded and came to nothing. After him came Judas the Galilean at the time of the census. He also drew people after him, but he too perished, and all who were loyal to him were scattered. So now I tell you, have nothing to do with these men and let them go. For if this endeavor or this activity is of human origin, it will destroy itself. But if it comes from God, you will not be able to destroy them. You may even find yourselves fighting against God. They were pursued by him. After recalling the apostles, they had them flogged, ordered them to stop speaking in the name of Jesus, and dismissed them. So they left the presence of the Sanhedrin, rejoicing that they had been found worthy to suffer dishonor for the sake of the name. And all day long, both in the temple and in their homes, they did not stop teaching and proclaiming the Christ Jesus, the word of the Lord. A responsorial psalm. One thing I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord. One thing I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is my life's refuge. Of whom shall I be afraid? One thing I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord. One thing I ask of the Lord, this I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life that I may gaze on the loveliness of the Lord and contemplate his temple. One thing I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord. I believe that I shall see the bounty of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord with courage. Be stout-hearted and wait for the Lord. One thing I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord. 
Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. One does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus went across the Sea of Galilee. A large crowd followed him because they saw the signs he was performing on the sick. He went up on the mountain, and there he sat down with his disciples. The Jewish feast of Passover was near. When Jesus raised his eyes and saw that a large crowd was coming to him, he said to Philip, Where can we buy enough food for them to eat? He said this to test him, because he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Two hundred days' wages worth of food would not be enough for each of them to have a little. One of the disciples, Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what good are these for so many? Jesus said, Have the people recline. Now there was a great deal of grass in that place. So the men reclined, about five thousand in number. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed them to those who were reclining, and also as much of the fish as they wanted. When they had had their fill, he said to the disciples, Gather the fragments left over, so that nothing will be wasted. So they collected them, and filled twelve wicker baskets with fragments. From the five barley loaves and had, that had been more than they could eat. When the people saw the sign he had done, they said, This is truly the prophet, the one who is to come into the world. Since Jesus knew that they were going to come and carry him off to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain alone. The Gospel of the Lord. This chapter that we find ourselves in in the Gospel of John, this pericope, as scholars will sometimes refer to something in Scripture, it's one that is found in all four of the synoptics, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. This multiplication, this feeding on the mountain, it's found in every one of the Gospels. Some of the details are different. John, for example, adds a few things, and I'll highlight those. Some of the others leave things out or they change it. But all of them have this large crowd coming to Jesus. And all of them acknowledge it's because of the miracles he's been doing. Now we hear that Jesus goes up this mountain. Um, clearly, it, it, it's a reflection back to Moses, the action taken by Moses when something great was to occur. It's almost like a drum roll that's being repeated now in Scripture with Jesus going up this mountain. All those people, as I noted, they were drawn by the miracles. But Jesus goes up that mountain. And also we know and we're told that the Jewish feast of the Passover is near. And John is the one who includes this aspect, the Gospel of John that we heard today. He does it really to show the idea of Jesus and the people in the Exodus. And as they had to exit and go out, so the people of God will have to, in a sense, certainly be moving, have to be changing, have to be growing. This large crowd, eventually Jesus says to Philip, you know, um, where can we buy enough food for them? And we're told it's, it's done to test them. And Philip kind of goes along and he puts it in a very earthly kind of response, earthly terminology. He's not quite, quite getting the idea and it says clearly here, Jesus did to test him. Where's his faith on this one? As you and I can be tested at various times. We also heard that the brother uh, of Simon Peter, Andrew, intervenes at this point. And he says, there's a young boy who has five barley loaves and two fishes. 
that whole idea that it's a young boy, uh, a child at the time, little or nothing uh, in terms of value for society. But once again, we find Jesus taking the least among them. And that individual, that least one, becomes in a sense an instrument of the Lord, something, someone through whom the Lord acts and this much greater deed of feeding all the people comes about. But even Andrew kind of says to Jesus about the fact that there's the five loaves and two fish, you know, but what good is something like this with so many people? So often in life, the problem we see is just seems so insurmountable. It seems too big for anything that you or I can really do about it. And here Christ is saying different terms when it comes to faith. Those obstacles aren't there. What seems so insurmountable, it's not. We just have to, in a sense, make ourselves disposed to the Lord. I sometimes wonder how did the, the, the young boy who did have these five loaves and two fish, how did he feel when they took him away? You know, he too has seen all these people here. And you, d you don't hear how he's approached and what is said to him. You don't hear, obviously he gave them up in some way, maybe knowing, well, what could I do against these, these older men who are saying, give me those, but also allowing himself to give what he has to turn it over to the Lord. These were people of faith, sometimes a little bit shallow because they were following Jesus because he was the wonder maker. He was performing these miracles and they had all heard about them. But this one man allowing what he had, in a sense, to be taken, to give it, so that more may be done. Not so different from what you and I are called to do at various times in our life. Do we do it as this young boy did? But we hear then Jesus when he has the five loaves and two fish. First of all, he takes it. He gives thanks. And then the distribution. Clearly we see, and also later near the Sal Sea of Galilee, where we heard about the Sea of Galilee at the beginning of the Gospel, so they're near it. Later there is another Eucharistic, if you want to say, prefigured after Christ's resurrection, where he sits down, he's at the water, and there is a feeding again. So, so often some of these Eucharistic motifs, they return to the Sea of Galilee. There's a location for them. Um, John mentions no role for the disciples in the distribution of the food. You know, there, I said this general theme, this story we find in the Gospel. But in all the others, Jesus asked the disciples to take the food and begin to distribute it. Doesn't, John doesn't do that here. Whether he just understands it's going to happen or he just for some reason it escapes him when it comes time to being recorded, uh, or he doesn't see it as a major thing. The major effort was Jesus multiplying the food and they, it, it's sent out. So in the others, we should recall, given to the, the disciples to distribute. Also here we find, and we hear this very clearly, he orders them to go about and collect the waste so that nothing is wasted. So the other fragments, nothing is to be wasted here. Of, once again, all the four synoptics, it's only John who records Jesus' command to the disciples and the reason for the gathering of the fragments. We hear in the others that there's food left over, that there's a lot left after everyone has eaten, but we don't hear this command of Christ to the apostles to go out and gather those fragments so that nothing will be wasted. John sees maybe the role of the disciple a little bit different than some of the others. They, they, they come behind in a sense. They gather those who have received the Lord so that nothing is wasted and bring them closer. So it really, we can't miss also something that's drawn out here 
since John is putting an emphasis on the Exodus, Jesus' relationship there, this whole idea of manna in the desert. If we remember, manna was fed, but we also heard it had to be consumed. If they kept it to the next day, it was no good. It had lost its effect. Somehow it had gone bad. That's not the case here. When we hear of those 12 baskets, John puts a number on it. Uh, 12 is supposed to be like a perfect number uh, back in Scripture and the use of numbers back in the Old Testament. And it's 12 baskets, the perfection of even what is left over in the distribution here. But the idea of manna, it could not be used, so to speak, the second day. Um, it, it, it went bad. Not the case with the fragments here that we hear about. At least we don't learn that. That what, you know, uh, the, the re what is left of Christ, the remains, must be gathered in and brought with the people as they journey. So we see the good of the New Testament of Jesus Christ that's done. It's not going to perish. It remains with us. It's, it's our strength, in a sense. You know, we see this gospel presentation of Jesus Christ here, where in many ways Christ is challenging the perceived idea of the crowd that has followed him. They see him as king. He's doing all these miracles. Um, they're drawn by it, but they can't see the deeper meaning of Jesus Christ. You and I are called also to see that deeper meaning, not only called to see it, to be part of that deeper meaning of who Jesus Christ is in salvation history and is in your life, in my life. So let's be aware of this gospel message, this, this feeding with the five loaves and the two fishes that we know about, we've heard about it. Let's reflect on this day. How does all that impact me today? Or do you think it's just so long ago, it, it has nothing to do with any of us? But it does. It has a great deal to do with who you are, who I am as a child of God. And let's remember that idea of the child who stepped forward. And the Lord took what little it seemed that he had and made it great for so many. Remember, we have been given gifts, each one of us. What do we do with that littleness who we think we are to allow the Lord to make what appears to be small, great. May God bless each one of us as we reflect upon these points in our lives. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us now stand, and as we continue to be filled with the Paschal joy, let us pray always more earnestly to God, that he who listens so graciously to our voice in prayer and in supplication to his beloved Son will hear our prayers and be pleased to answer them. For the shepherd of our souls, that they may be and, and be the strength and have the strength to govern wisely the flock that the Lord has entrusted to them. For this we pray to the Lord for the whole world, but particularly for Holy Mother Church, that she may truly know the peace given by Christ and transmit that peace to all the world. For her we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. For our brothers and sisters who suffer from the coronavirus, that they will be touched by the healing hand of the Lord and given the strength, the courage, the determination they need to recover we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For our own community here in the Diocese of Venice, that is, we struggle to come to understand our lives in this time of the pandemic and to love and understand the needs of those around us. For this, we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died because of the pandemic, that they continue on their journey to the Lord, to that promise of eternal life that he has given. For them we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. 
O God, who know that our life in this present age is subject to suffering and subject to need, hear the desires of those who cry to you and receive the prayers of those who believe in you. We do ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine may we come to share in Christ's divinity as he humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept in compassion, Lord, we pray, the offering of your family, that under your protective care they may never lose what they have received, but attain the gifts that are eternal, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and even pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy. Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be made to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing 
and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of his saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the spiritual victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity, your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of the family who you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. May the blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I unite myself to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> Keep safe, O Lord, we pray, those whom you have saved by your kindness, that, redeemed by the passion of your Son, they may rejoice in his resurrection, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in the peace of Christ, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God, alleluia, alleluia.